Welcome, everybody. What's up? We're streaming live here on, on Leech Us and Twitch. I'm International Master William Pascal, aka Sladgy, here on Twitch. Welcome to my channel. We also have a YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube, if you'd like to watch the replays of my, my live streams here. Welcome, Masturbate, Schieber, Spieler, VIPs, present and accounted for. Shiver Spieler, what's up with you? Are you going to be streaming this week? You were streaming a simul? Was it last time? Was it yesterday? I can't remember anything. I saw you were streaming. I guess it was yesterday. Astrobate was talking about a simul game. He had a mating sequence. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I've devoted the Wednesday streams, as you know, to a new Strange Things Happen. I devoted the Wednesday stream to a new subject. We used to play like weird openings and take blitz challenges, but I'm going to, um, from last week, we're going to be trying to do something more constructive with this time. <clears throat> so I'm doing retro game analysis of Masters and opening analysis here. Astrobate yesterday suggested that we analyze games of Rudolf Spielmann sort of jokingly, but I thought, why not? Last week we looked at another older master, in fact, um, Joseph Henry Blackburn, who's a favorite of mine. But I thought for um, for Astrobate, we'll take a look at a couple of games by Rudolf Spielmann, who was a later player, actually. But... Um, I mean, Blackburn goes back into the 1800s. I guess Spielmann was like the 1900s, around 1900 to 19, late 30s. What's up, world loser? So, congratulations on your third, was it third place? Third place yesterday. Yevgeny was second. All right, this is a favorite game of mine. And um, I don't know, some of you probably have seen it. But I thought Astrobate might not have seen it for sure. And um, it's instructive for everybody. So let me just check the details on this. It was played in 19... Yeah, 34. So this is fairly late by Rudolf Spielmann's career standards. And uh, it was played here in Hungary. Which might be interesting for Schieber Spieler in Chopron. There's a player here who's the opponent of, of uh, Rudolf Spielmann, this Erno Garaban, who's a kind of unknown player. But the funny thing about Erno Garaban seems to be that he might have had two names. I think they changed his name because he was Jewish. In some sources, he went by a different name, I guess, in the 30s because of, like, occupation or whatever. I don't know. But, um... What the deal was but he has two names if you look in the database you can find them under two different names this uh this game was a fantastic game i think one of spielman's best games remember this is like pre-world war ii or just when world war ii was like about to start in 1939 um so it was pretty late at the end of, of rudolph spielman's career he's playing black here I don't have study feature, so it's going to be a little bit hard to, uh, to analyze these games as nicely. Spielman was black. It's d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, and d5. Right, but you have to be careful with that because the trick is he's not really Ernst Grunfeld. This, this is the trick. He's not the Austrian Ernst Grunfeld, so it becomes doubly tricky. He has a second name, and he's not the same player known as Ernst Grunfeld. This is a different Ernst Grunfeld, which makes it even more confusing. So this guy is not the famous Austrian master Ernst Grunfeld. It's another master who was from Hungary with the same exact name essentially 
Way plays e3 against the Grunfeld. And, um... You know, the Grunfeld was relatively newer still in this time. Bob Vinick started playing it. Aliakin played it. So the following game is Acerbate. He's not Austrian. Don't get confused, all right? We're trying to make this clear. There's a very famous grandmaster or master named Ernst Grunfeld from Austria. This guy had the exact same name, but he's not the same player. This is not, and a lot of like databases and stuff have it confused. This is not Ernst Grunfeld, but that was his name technically. So e3, bishop g7, knight f3, and now castles. White to play. Spielman is black. I mean, e e3, Grunfeld is not dangerous. If you think about the Grunfeld, the critical line is CD destroying the center. I've played this sort of system a lot with white, but it's it's pretty harmless. I mean, e3. I think that black's best plan is to play for c5 early. Bishop g7, knight f3, castles, also reverse Catalan. A Grunfeld. It's also connected to Tarash. If you play, if you get in c5, it's essentially a Tarash. But now white has a number of different moves. I mean, I've played cd. I play queen b3. What else can white play? b4, the Makagana variation. Stopping or attempting, I should say, attempting to stop c5. But this move is, is pretty passive for white. Now, I mean, there's nothing that can stop c5 here. In those days, there was no really established, not a lot of established theory, and certainly not in a sideline like this. Um, black normally should go for c5 according to theory. I guess the trick is, you know, not understanding fully like how you're going to get this pawn back with bishop d2 taking away the queen a5 kind of ideas. I think people are reluctant to play c5. Maybe in reality black can just get the pawn back with knight a6 or knight on bd7. Let's see how this works. D takes c5, knight a6. I guess this is the point. Like c takes d5, knight takes c5. You know, I don't think that they were aware of this sort of delayed gambit style of play. I guess I looked at this once. This is the idea that black gets the pawn back. Bishop c4. You're still not getting your pawn back. Black is, is moved like what? Move 9 and we still are not close to getting our pawn back. a6. a4. It's kind of creepy, you know. Bishop f5. Drea versus Jeffrey Zhang from 2014. Drea lost with white. Grave lost with white here. Castles. Rook c8. I guess knight d4. No. William Lombardi versus Girigiu. So this is really far afield. I just wanted to show you guys generally how the established theory works. If you if you get the chance, you should play for c5. It's exactly like uh, Catalan, like you're talking about. I mean, the themes are a lot a lot like the Catalan. But in those days, nobody really knew this stuff this well. So after bishop d2, Rudolf Spielmann, you know, a normally a very aggressive player, just decided to play c6. This is not great, though. It's solid. I think that e6, you know, there's an interesting thing with, um, how did it start? with Alyakin, I guess. Alyakin was the first one to think of this idea of playing e6. And then Bafinik followed him in some similar e3 Grunfelds. Basically the premise is to defend the pawn with the e pawn so that then you can play like b6 and c5 and play aggressively on the queen side. Now if you play like this and you get a symmetrical structure with some sort of exchange, 
I mean, this this is going to be a tough position for for both sides to do anything with a totally symmetrical structure. So I think that's also more aggressive. And obviously there's some experimental moves you could try like this, I guess b6, but it doesn't support the center. I, I don't know, this, this is probably not that great. I think you really gotta make a decision here, either to attack the center, support it, that's about it. I don't really like d takes c, though it's probably playable, you could play c5 again. Try to play c5 somehow. I'm not sure if we can get it in. Here's a game of Vacher in 2018. He just takes on c4. I don't know. That seems kind of strange. What do we do now? How do we play c5? I have the feeling that's not black's best line. Let's see what the engine says. e6, number one move. e6, c5, or c6. I think this is a mistake. You know, it's interesting to see. Mama Jarov who really plays a lot of these lines with like e3 getting getting Bashir to give up his center for for very little there that's that's surprising but i i suppose that Bashir is more into like really theoretical lines maybe e3 is a good good choice against him um all right so this is the game game garabin versus versus rudolf spielman it's going to get interesting c6 passive move White plays queen b3, which is probably good. And then b6. So here again, I mean, e6 is the solid move, but it doesn't make quite as much sense now. We, we don't have c5. We've already played c6. So that's the safest move, controlling, keeping the center on d5. Black plays b6. All right, now we gotta be careful of possible sacrifices in some lines by white on the pawn chain, but I don't see anything happening here. B6 is reasonable. And this is the, oh God. I can't believe I let the other guy have the symmetrical pawn structure moment. I mean, technically white stands better with the pawn on C4 versus a pawn on C6. But his queen is on a weird position. I mean, this queen could be badly placed in the long run. It could come under attack. By knight a5 primarily. And white, you know, does white really want to exchange his fourth rank pawn for this third rank pawn? But he does it to create like a symmetrical position. He's playing a famous master. So it's like an ugly sort of exchange slav now. You know, I don't think that Black played the opening correctly. He ends up with nothing special. Um, actually, a very tough position. What's amazing about this game, it's like a very, very tough position for Black to get anything dynamic going on. I mean, I would expect it likely to be a draw. And if White's the better player, you know, maybe he'll even have a slight edge or win. And you can see here that White had a good score from this position in the database. But watch what happens now. Okay, Black gets the c6 square for his knight. That could be relevant at some point. I mean, my first reaction was was probably knight knight c6 next, but it's white's move. Rook c1, and now bishop b7, and now knight e5. Now, one thing I don't understand fully here is, does white need to play knight e5? I guess he's afraid of knight c6 when his queen will get attacked by knight a5. But I'm not under the impression that white necessarily has to play knight e5. I mean, just bishop e2 looks solid, although I think that black's probably equal here now. So white plays this, and this is where we get creative, first of all. Because most people would play, I would think, knight c6. Does knight c6 work? To threaten knight a5 and trade off a strong knight on e5? I mean, how do you beat like a solid player from black here? Very difficult to do. This, this is an amazing game. Knight c6. This is the normal move, I think. Anybody else have a preference? Ladislav Sarkozy.
Looks like this has been played a couple of games. Nobody played Knight C6. Am I missing something? Dude, what's wrong with Knight C6? Does White have Knight D5? World Loser 94 looks good. Are you sure about that? It looks like it's it's a non-developing move. If ninety four, you allow the pawn to be transported here, which is good for your bishop, but it's not good for this. I don't like this. I guess black could play e6. I wouldn't say ninety four looks good. I would say it looks like an active move, but I'm not sure if it's justified. This could get really nasty after like e6, bishop e4. And I'm somewhat concerned about our position. Maybe black isn't lost, but it doesn't, I don't like it. This doesn't look good to me. I mean, here, here. We're probably going to lose an exchange somewhere. But World Loser is not a defensive player. I am concerned about this knight on e5, and I don't want to be like Magnus against against, uh, who was it now, Dubov. Dubov Magus with the knight on e5 in his most recent conflict. I think with the knight on e5, we have to, although World Loser's idea does give us f6, it's not going to happen with this diagonal. I mean, moving that knight is, is not a bad idea. You can see some people play knight fd7. But I was wondering about this. Does this allow knight takes d5? You take here and everything's okay. It's probably equal. Here we could still lose the exchange though, although this diagonal is, is awesome now. The bishop gets happy. We get insights into Sheber Spieler's mind. When you get bishops, you're happy. And when your bishops get open lines, they're happy. Everybody's happy. I'm just surprised that no one would play knight c6. There must be something wrong with the move. I mean, I guess this isn't very exciting, like here. For one thing. But I, I mean, I think that black is probably okay here. I don't know. Computer now thinks it's the third best move. There's also like the super subtle a6 weakening the queen side which I don't really like so check it out here he plays he plays not knight on bd7 which is playable as well but knight fd7 now I'm gonna turn off the engine now obviously this this makes sense this is a common idea in these structures, keep control of the c6 square so nothing comes in here. This allows us to play f6 possibly later. We're undermining the knight in e5. But I guess the main idea is that if black takes, we're going to take with the queen and then use what's the idea to play this? To preserve? You would think like possibly take with the queen, though I still don't, I'm not crazy about this. Honestly, I mean, I think that this is what white should have done. White gets cocky here. I mean, after knight takes d7, it's funny, this position has been reached. Some guy played against Bielikov, some... Petar Bielikov, I don't know who that is. There's another Bielikov who's stronger from, from Belarusia, but famous player, theoretician. But seriously, after knight e5... Knight fd7, what would you do? 
What would she Sheber Spieler do? Sheber Spieler, what would you do? Take. And how would black recapture with the queen allowing bishop e5? And then we have to play some sort of awkward move. Like back to d8 maybe. And what and white white is slightly better. I mean this is kind of the position that white wants, you know, something safe safe and boring. I mean baby black's turning e5, but still. Blobix, thanks for subscribing. Take her knight d3. Knight d3 is an interesting suggestion. Coming here. Bobix, we're, we're analyzing one of your contemporaries, Rudolf Spielmann. So this is a game from Chopron in 1939, pre-war. Your prime. I can joke about other old people, since I'm old now as well. <laughs> so knight d3, I mean, maybe maybe black could go bishop a6 and try to, nope. Yeah, knight d3 looks okay. But he plays this in the game, f4. No, I'm crazy. He plays knight takes d7. Is that right? Did I leave the game? No, it's knight d7. All right, I thought about f4. I might play f4 on an aggressive day. Then I would expect black plays like a Grunfeld, maybe e6. e6 followed by f6. Or possibly some exchange on e5. But I was thinking, look at this game here from 1993. Take, take, and f6 is possible, of course. I don't know which way white takes. Probably with the F pawn. That actually looks decent. But you have to watch for E4 maybe. This is very sharp actually. Yeah, this might be decent. Computer says E6. What? You can do that? That's that's a problem. Queen E6, you have knight B5. Huh. So it gets very complicated after that. Black left play f5, try to surround this, but there's problems with the c7 square. Knight b5 here. But who knows what's going on in this position. So white didn't play f4, he plays this, which looks perfectly safe. Knight takes d7. Black plays knight takes d7. This was crafty. I mean, I expect black to play queen d7. And then trying to play you know, either e5 or maybe e6 followed by knight c6. Black is slightly passive. So this is the first moment where things get kind of weird. Black plays knight takes. I mean, this on paper looks like worse than knight c6. The knight, you know, it doesn't have anywhere to go except for here, which would leave the e5 square weak. So I don't know. It's a nice tactic, like knight takes, knight takes d5. What's the truth, guys, about this? Was Rudolf Spielmann going to play this? I don't think that's the answer. I don't think this is the answer. You have rook takes c5. So this is pretty deep. He actually sacks the pawn with the idea, I guess, of e5. This has to be the idea. I mean, unless there's something crazy that I don't see. It opens up the queen here. You're obviously blasting way to center. The white king is still in the middle. But I am concerned about these bishop moves to b4 and, and b5. I'm not sure what's happening here. 
I found this this game years ago in some book, but I don't remember now. I don't remember now if there was any analysis of this. I looked at it a long time ago. I'm not sure if I had a definite conclusion. What do you guys think? One of Rudolf Spielmann's greatest games, most destructive anyway, from 1939. Played here in Chopron, Hungary, home of Choproni beer. Seriously, the beer capital of Hungary. Knight takes d7, f4, e5. Uh-oh, I gave away the secret. The guy played f4, but first of all, let's... Let's look at knight takes d5. It's e5, right? What happens on knight bishop e4? Now we have this. There's all sorts of crazy stuff we can have. Black could sack the exchange, get his queen trapped. Man, this is apparently good for black. Look at that engine evaluation. Bishop f8, queen f8 with advantage to black. <laughs> f4 would never get played these days. It may not be a bad move. It's just a little ugly. In reality, I'm not sure if it's a, if it's such a bad move. I mean, obviously, it's it's always risky to move the f pawn. This is a game continuation. I mean, Garaban expected Black to play something normal now. You know, like most people would, probably e6, or just some normal move. What other move is there? I mean, knight f6. Most average chess players would defend their d-pawn with some ordinary move. But he plays e5. Through f4, I think white is slightly better. No. The computer actually prefers black or it's, it's equal. It's equal when you give it time to analyze the position. 0.0. .0. At first it liked black. Black's king is not in the center. I mean, that's the number one thing. I don't think that there is really any other important factor here. The fact that white's king is still in the center is the main thing. This is not appropriate to play a5. Not a good moment for that joke. But this sacrifice he now plays is is pretty unbelievable. To even come up with this idea and play against a, a decent master strength player is, is insane. I mean that in a good way. It's unlikely that either Schieberspiel or I would do this. I would think. Maybe in a blitz game, but even then, you know, you need time to calculate. This is an unbelievable sort of calculated risk move. But a beautiful idea nonetheless. So, Black's frustrated. He can't get counterplay. With conventional moves. And he's not playing like a beginner. I mean that's the thing. It's not a it's not a simul against like a fifteen hundred player. You know the guy is a credible, credible master. Schieberspieler would do it in blitz. E five, F E five, and ninety five, and D E five. If we recapture, we have one pawn for a piece. Is that right? You did similarly against World Loser yesterday? I didn't see the game. 
The attack failed miserably. So he doesn't take back on e5. This is a tempting move. I mean, threatening queen h4 check. But d4 opens up both bishops. Anyway. Now I'm trying to remember... I'm trying to remember what White's best defense was. I looked at this a long time ago. Was it somehow 92? It's possible that this is the best. Retreating back to E2 where he covers different squares. Obviously he would just like blockade if you go D3. Take the pawn. Yeah, you've got three, at least three candidate moves, right? Like, take the pawn is one, 92 is another, and there's a game continuation, 91. That looks kind of passive, but it guards that square. From the queen check. I would need a little time to come up with the best move here for white. Is that the consensus? I think Blobix's suggestion is the least obvious. This looks like... It looks like you're inviting the spider, you know, into back into the web here. I call it like helping the opponent's pieces to develop. You're, you're basically helping Black's queen. Like, invite, come on in and kill me, you know with pawn takes d4. I mean, I think that's a little counterintuitive to bring bring the black queen down. There's also queen h4 check, I should mention. This this actually might be stronger, right? I'm not sure if g3 is good. But we've got that other little problem with, <laughs> with this diagonal. It's possible that pawn takes pawn is immediately a disaster. Of course, he can try to walk away. Better would be king d1, right? But the open lines are pretty serious. And these are just... Every single one of black's pieces is ready to go. Rook d8, rook c8, bishops on long diagonals. You know, this this is... I don't like pawn takes pawn. I mean, I don't know, you know, if, if, if it's wrong for white, if white's really done anything wrong. The bottom line, I am brick top, is that this is a speculative sacrifice. I'm not sure it even works, 100%. A really, really strong defensive player might actually like this position, you know, like Korchnoi. Might, might feel it's worthwhile to induce his opponent to make a semi-correct sacrifice. The computer might be able to refute it. Let's see. Like, the computer thinks that white is slightly better here. So, it's hard to say f4 is a mistake if white is better, according to the engine. This is what always, like, Tal is famous for. Sacrifices that, that, that lead the opponent into a very complicated web. But I don't think we can say that white did anything wrong, concretely. Um, this may not even be, according to the book, you know, principles, correct, sacrifice, but it's on the borderline. 91. This was actually probably better. Anyway, it's a really beautiful game. Knight d1, bishop takes e5. I guess that's best. But not too many people can defend like a computer wants to defend this position. White has to play perfectly to keep some sort of advantage, or even not lose in a practical sense. Now I think this is like the ultimate example of a 
of a great practical sacrifice. And that's why Rudolf Spielmann was considered a great player. Games like this. What I, th I find amazing is that he found a way in a boring symmetrical position to do this. You know, It's not like it was a sharp position to begin with. He found a way. F4 gave him a way to make, make a boring position sharp by doing this piece sacrifice. You know, that's pretty amazing. I agree, though. F4 is a riskier move. A solid player wouldn't play it. So bishop e5, and now white tries to close the lines. This is a huge threat. Pushing to d3, you're losing more material. You can't just do this and bring the white queen to the center. I mean, I think that's that's not going to help our case. Black has no time for for mistakes. And this pawn on d4 is really important, actually. It's totally... It's like a bomb in the middle of white's position. So we don't want to just give that away. Black has to use every resource at his disposal here to increase his his position positional chances. Studies work again? Wow. Yay! The crash is fixed. I can put this in a study now. So, bishop takes e5, threatening queen h4, check, maybe. Although, this is still possible, knight f2. That's his idea. White tries to blockade, which reminds me of Dimzovich. I thought this was actually a pretty cool idea. But obviously, you know, not without risk. Could white defend without playing this? He actually wanted to avoid opening lines, but maybe ultimately the lines are going to open anyway after bishop takes e4. Is there a better way for white to play? Actually, why doesn't white play knight f2? Why play e4 immediately? I mean, he thought he would gain a tempo, like e4, bishop... Bishop e4, knight f2. Is it really worth it though, giving that pawn? Maybe black should play, I mean white should play knight f2 immediately. What's up with that? Clearly black has threats along the e-file perhaps, but, but what exactly? I bet Schieberspieler would have played knight f2. It is the most obvious move. Like, what's up here? The engine says pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn, and bishop d4. But that is not that scary, necessarily. You wouldn't have played f4. <laughs> yeah, Vera Carlson. You're up a piece. And that's important. You know, when you're up material, you can give back material to break the attack. I think the number one thing with this move is that he's trying to, to create like a kind of blockade against this pawn. He'll give you this diagonal, but he's freezing this one on d4 to try to set up a very serious sort of solid control of the, of the square, c4, d3, and stop this pawn from moving on d4. But there's a lot of risk because you give this one up. I mean, this, this is obviously very dangerous. And now it's two pawns. It's, it's a big difference. We have two pawns. Very active pieces. It looks like black has enough for the piece, definitely. Knight f2, bishop d5. And here, there must be a problem with bishop c4. You just drop g2. You just... He actually could have done this, though. Maybe white should have played bishop c4 and sacrificed the third pawn. Can we do this? Bishop c4, bishop takes g2. The problem is like the white king is ever gonna make it to the queen side. There's no castling queen side. 
The only chance is to like walk away over there manually. Black is not even that material. Absolutely. So after like bishop g2, rook g1. Maybe white would have had some counterattacking chances. I don't know. Like knight g4, this is coming. We've got queen h4. I'm just wondering, where does black go with the bishop? This is covered, this is covered, this is covered. This is awkward. So you probably have to come back here. And now all of white's pieces look active. Maybe black has another move there, but I don't see it. I just wonder, should bishop c4 be the best move? Yeah. It's actually the best move according to Stockfish. Unclear. Bishop c4, bishop g2, rook g1, king d1. Here, king d1, walking away, trying to walk to safety over there. You're totally unclear position. I'm cheating during analysis, but no, seriously. This position says, it's the computer says it's equal, right? Approximately equal. But in a real game, I mean, it's harder to play white when your king is exposed. Black has the better practical chances. But I do think the blockade of this pawn is having an effect. It's almost like it creates a safe area for the white king. The white king has a file where he's actually safe. That's really, like, noticeable right here. Like, check out the king here. It's actually on a closed file. It's the only time in its life when it's not going to be on an open file with, like, a black heavy piece on it. Because he sacrificed the pawn on d4. That is actually... The pawn on d4 is essentially, like, giving the white king a safe place to, to live. Bishop h6. Hmm. Now it's a threat. You could play it right away, huh? True. And the problem is you can't play rook e8 because of bishop f7 check. Black might simply have to play bishop g7. You know, and again, we're in the twilight zone. But I think that black has enough compensation. He has three pawns for a knight in a sharp position. But I can't say he's winning. In the game, he played this, which I guess is OK, guarding against queen h4, and guarding his, guarding his g2 pawn. The toilet zone? Hmm. It sounds like something from from Kramnik to Palov. Blobix, we're going back to Kramnik to Palov. That's what Kramnik was accused of. Doing what I did. He's using the toilet area for analysis. Um popular these days, I guess. Queen h3, queen e7, bishop e2. And that's awkward. What about king d1? As I said, like, this is the only line that's closed. Is king d1 such a stupid idea? Probably not. It wasn't so much, I mean, we all lived, you were probably a lot younger back in those days, you're out crossing. But the Kramnik Topalov thing was largely orchestrated by his manager. Probably more so than Topalov himself. Uh, Silvio Danilov. I think it was more him than, than Topalov himself. Queen e7, bishop e2. I wonder here. King d1 is is a is a promising move. Okay, so they're both playable. 
That's a tough decision for White. But you know, like, White, this is a trick. In the back of his mind, Garaben wants to castle kingside. He still can castle kingside. He hasn't moved his king. Yeah, you should have a video call while you're in the bathroom. There have been some scandals in Polish tournaments. You never saw so many players in the bathroom. Um, as recent days, huh? I miss playing over the board. So he's still trying to castle kingside, and then black plays this. Knight takes, only move. But what's the big deal, right? We just gave back one of our precious two pawns. But I was saying that the d4 pawn was getting in the way anyway. And this is for me like the hardest part of the game, so he, he just plays this. And if castles you drop a piece to bishop d4 check. It's ironic though, what if he had had what if he had played the other move I said, king d1? In retrospect, this looks like it was a better try. Maybe black still can sacrifice a pawn. But it's not nearly as good, is it? At least he can open up the lines. Seriously, what do you play after king d1? D3 is is one of the best moves. Wow. Look at this position. D3, knight takes C3, bishop G7, obviously. <laughs> and black has full compensation for the knight. Dude, I mean, look at this position. Who would you rather be, white or black? How about you... Shiver Spieler. Would you rather play white or black in a tournament game? The computer says it's equal. Now your a5 may actually make sense. But I think it depends on who you're playing and how much time you have. The faster the time control, the more I'd want to be black. You have to completely change your style based on time control to be a optimal player. Practical. Anyways, all right, so he doesn't do it. He tries to, to keep castling options available. Then black sacks another pawn, knight tc3, rook e8, and now king f1. No checks. We have bishop takes b2, but that doesn't seem to do anything here. He just defends with rook e1. Alright. We have a check on f6. Obviously, if you interpose on f4, black has some sort of g5 moves. So here, here, here. White never could have castled without losing a whole piece. Maybe there was some moment where he could castle and give an entire piece back. I'm not sure what you meant, Wernaki, by rook c8. In what position? When was rook c8 a possible move? Like around here? But we can't. No, it's covered. It's covered, unfortunately. 
Obviously, he saw through your devilish plan to play rook c8. Bishop b2, rook e1, queen f6, knight f2, bishop d4, queen g3. And now, I remember analyzing this. This is like the critical moment in the game. And maybe like black's only mistake was here. I mean, if you look at this with like Stockfish and do a survey analysis of the whole game or whatever, I think this is one of the moves that was a question mark. Maybe the only move Black made a major error in the whole game, which is pretty amazing. I mean, speculative sacrifice and everything. This game was played in 1939, but he finally makes a major error here. He should have played Rook E5, apparently. And black is almost winning because rook e5 gives you the idea of rook f5 as well as doubling rooks. But he errors with rook e4. Here you have no rook f4. It's just a one dimensional move, essentially. The only plan is doubling rooks on the e file or tripling on the e file. So rook e5 was a lot stronger giving you two ideas instead of one. That's a pretty good game if you're only like question mark one mistake rook e5. He made some inaccuracies. Multifaceted. Multidimensional is something from from Star Trek the Next Generation. Rook e4 mistake. And now apparently, according to some engines, I think the analysis was that white could survive. There is some sort of move here. Is it like bishop f3? I don't remember now. Um, there was a move for white to survive now. I mean, come to think of it, like, say I play rookie five. Do you have this? Is that the point? I still do rook f5? Or what? Doesn't white have, like, knight g4 now? Rookie four is just a fancy way of doubling. I guess it guards, it guards against rook g4 or knight g4. Some, some moves might white potentially play. It controls the center. <laughs> Rook e4 controls the center. Um, are we winning here? I thought I recalled that black was winning in this position, but now I'm not sure. Check here. Or is there anything with down there? Yeah, I mean, rook e7 is a simple move. But you've got to watch out for bishop g5. That's the problem here, I guess. Rook e5 also stops that, which makes it extra tempting. So my only question is bishop f3. This is lost. Check. I'm cheating with the engine. Rook takes, bishop takes. Damn. So the slow motion, I was like looking for something here. But only slow motion moves. Rook e8. Let's say bishop d2. That hurts. Bishop f2. Queen f2. Queen a1 check. It's like Morphe or something. That's why you want to get your king out of the center, kids at an early stage. There's some defense for white here. Oh, not after rookie 5 though, I guess. Yeah, rookie 5 there is no defense. But he probably figured that white could survive somehow there. I don't know how rookie 4 helps. Apparently white can hold now. Why would it matter?
No, I mean, I think strongly oriented tactical players would see that line. No problem. Look at all these noobs doing puzzle rush. There are some million people who can do Morales. They're like 90 on puzzle NATO, and positionally they're like zero, you know. There's a lot of people like that. I play and see people all the time. They're like 1,500 strategically, but they can calculate 20 moves deep. There's more and more players like that now. I see like 1,200s who can do tons of puzzles, but they, they don't know the first thing about strategic play. It's a common problem these days. Tactics are easier to master because of puzzle problems online and stuff. I think a lot of people would see that line. You'd be surprised. They're just they're just turning themselves into like calculator machines without the strategic side of the game. That used to be unheard of. I mean, very rare. But I disagree. I think a lot of people would see it. The Blitzination. But Ricky Ford, there's a defense. I thought there was a defense here. It's weird. Okay, so there is. Dude, it even took the engine 10 seconds to see it. I mean, objectively... I guess objectively this... I never put a computer on this position overnight or something. Maybe black's winning somehow, but it says this. Stopping bishop c4 ideas, I guess. It looks like white's going to have a hard time surviving no matter what. But it looks like rook c1 might make it difficult. Do you have to go here again? Re-promoting re this idea? And then bishop d3, stopping rook f5. The, the white position still looks maybe lost. Objectively lost. The computer doesn't want to call it. I guess if you let stockfish run overnight or alpha zero or something. Probably alpha zero versus alpha zero in a long time control game, eventually black would win, I would guess. But it's it's like 50 moves of perfect, perfect play. I love this. White didn't find rook c1. He played the natural move h4, and then we double and it's over. But what does this example illustrate? Like coordination of the pieces. Every one of Black's pieces is coordinated together. Perfect example. And they just trying to get the rook in the game. I was just trying to get my rook in the game. Almost a participant, right? And then no, too late. Check here. And then rookie three. And then just the sacrifice to win two pieces and the king is exposed. So now you're just down the exchange with a devastating attack. Check, king d1, bishop takes g2. Bishop f3, check. You can't drop the rook. There's nothing with queen d8 check here. And then this is cute. He goes into a really simple continuation, but I don't know if there's anything better. Bishop c3. Bishop f3, queen f3 check. And that's a winning queen end game. Or actually you win a whole piece here. Yeah. Resigns. But I thought this is a great, great Spielman game. Let's see if we can find something else. What time is it? 12 o'clock? We should devote about half the stream to opening analysis. Let's see if I can find another game to go through quickly. Rudolf Spielman. Chess. What's chess? Rudolf Spielman chess. I misspelled Spielman, I think, in the stream. It's double N. Did I put Spielman with one N? I did that. At least be accurate. What kind of international master are you? You misspell people's names. 
All right. OBS is so slow. Done. No name. Guys, welcome to the stream. Please support the stream if you'd like to see more great chess games. How about Spielman versus Rubenstein? 1911, not easy to do. I'm just pulling this game up. I don't know it. Um, but to beat Rubenstein in his prime in Carlsbad, 2011. Hmm. I hope I'm going to be able to grab this this game score. Let's see. There's stupid notations. The site I found. Stupid notations are going to make it impossible to copy and paste this. Maybe not. It worked. Cool. All right. Am I on a different window? You guys see this? Do you guys see this? Oh, you do. Okay. So this is um, Rudolf Spielmann versus Rubenstein. Dude, Rubenstein was unbelievable. To beat him. Let's change the Ponda text. I was just looking with Antonia at a game from Gelfand, who's heavily influenced by Rubenstein. Man, you could do a lot of a lot of worse things than to study Rubenstein's games and nobody else. And just emulate him. <clears throat> Alright, so this is uh Spielman Rubenstein from Carlo Vivari. 1911. Rubenstein in his prime playing black. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. It's a four knight. bb5, bishop b4. So this is actually, you know, one maybe one of the the best systems for black against the four knights. Rubenstein was one of the most modern opening players of all time. It was like he was like in contact with ancient aliens or something. How did Rubenstein play the opening so well? It's kind of scary. He had such an amazing modern sense for opening play. Castle, castle, d3, d6, bishop, g5. This is like a main line. Bishop, c3, b takes c, and queen, e7. And I don't know if Rubenstein invented this, but it's sort of like named after him. They're calling it the Metger unpin. I guess Metger invented it. Rubenstein just made it famous. So this is main line. Rookie one, knight d8. And that's an idea that Rubenstein also used with white himself. I saw in exchange Maybe it wasn't Rubenstein. I saw a Capablanca game where he played knight, knight d1 with white. Queen e2 and knight d1. It's not easy to find another way to unpin yourself. The idea is this. Maybe we can play... Maybe we can play h6 and g5, especially with support of the knight on e6. Rudolf Spielmann is white. This is like even mainline theory today. And these guys were playing this in 1911. I mean, that's 110 years ago. And this is still considered best play by both sides. Knight e6, bishop c1. Now, this 
this is tough for black to decide what to do. C5 is the main line. I think Rubenstein didn't like the weakness of d5, probably. Although he may have subsequently played c5, I'm not sure. I feel like that was a known move at that time. But c6 definitely gives up the square. This, this idea for white controlling the d5 square in the main line is something like the Sicilian e4 e5 and rook d8 not too slow that's a main move but it's kind of weird a weird move you know like in what in what situation is this gonna really open up I guess all it does essentially it's a creative way of defending e5 is what it is because I don't think you're going to play d5 and let open the position for the two bishops. It's basically just defending this pawn indirectly. Take, take, and your queen is hanging, so you have to move the queen. And then white doesn't have time to take that pawn on e5. Now that would be a perfect situation for black. Open file. But I don't know. Like, in a vacuum, you'd rather have your rook on e8, I guess. Obviously not available here, but anyway, speaking theoretically, if you have to pick a square, like it's a Sicilian hedgehog or something, we normally want it on e8. The link of the previous game? Sure. I can find the link of the previous game. Where did it go, man? I hate this site, thechessgames.com, but it's the easiest place to find games quickly. I honestly sort of detest that site. That's the easiest place to find it, though. But again, like cautionary word with that game, Birat Carlson. A lot of confusion in chess history with that game, thinking that that's Ernst Grunfeld playing white. And it's not. Um, this is a Hungarian master playing white. The game has been misrecorded in some, some PGN, some websites. In fact, I saw a link somewhere that, that said it was Ernst Grunfeld playing against Rubinstein. Possibly even books have made that mistake. But it's it's this guy Garaben. Alright. Um You'll you'll find like Grunfeld the game under Grunfeld uh, Spielman in some texts, but that's incorrect technically. Bishop F one. You know what's the problem with C six guys? Either way you go, right? I mean, if you play c5, that's the problem with the bishop pair that white has here. If you play c5, then your white squares are soft. If you play c6, then your dark squares are soft. Like, you can't have it, you can't have it both ways. One way or the other, you're going to have some kind of weak squares long term. And that's why the, the, this is why really, like, the four knights is still considered a good system. I'm not sure that black is 100%, like, solved his opening problem. You see White's score pretty convincing here. 37% wins, 19% losses. You know, I, I suppose you could play C5 now. But White's plan oftentimes is to play like G3. G3, this bishop could come out either way. It's like a King's Indian attack for White. Basically, that that's what it morphs to. 
G3 will protect the F4 square from this knight coming in. And white, I think, is... The bishop pair is probably worth more than the, the doubled pawns. I don't think it's easy to attack these doubled pawns, right? Antonio Morales says four knights, hmm, you think worth to play? I still think that, yes. People are still interested in the four knights. Um, I think it's still an interesting line. A good alternative opening. Rook d8, g3. And now what's black do? He's got a solid defensive position. But really, no active operations whatsoever. I mean, the problem with the four knights, it's ironic that Rubenstein played this game, right? Because, like, this is called the Rubenstein variation. I mean, he, pl he played both. Your biggest enemy, if you play the four knights, I guess, is knight to d4. Before, before Morales gets excited, like your favorite move, is solving this. Here the winning chances are slightly reduced. So that's considered main line. If you play this with black, I remember infinite flash chess. He used to come on my stream. I guess... He's around still. He he showed a game he had from some tournament where like White intentionally played for a draw here. I've seen that done. I knew a guy who did that against Igor Ivanov in Boston. He just plays like knight takes d4, pawn d4, e5. There's nothing like black can do. Igor was just like draw? Okay. So that's one problem. With black, if you're a strong player, you can't just allow like a forced draw variation. But Rubenstein is trying to win against a dangerous attacking player here. Keeping the position tense. G3, queen c7. Just defending e5. How is black supposed to defend e5? It's funny, there's not a lot of games here. What did black do wrong? It looks like maybe he, he could play queen c7 directly, just do away with that whole... The whole rook d8 thing is kind of overrated. But I don't think there's any way for black to completely equalize here. It's like a nimzo, essentially, where white has more space. Now knight f8, which is kind of an unhappy move, for example. Queen c7, knight h4. So we start to see attacking ideas with knight f5, maybe f4. But wait, has to be careful. And then d5. Whoa. Whoa! The robot dog move. You can buy a robot dog for $75,000. I just saw that this morning. I thought it was rather interesting. This company is selling robot dogs. I thought it was a reasonable price. If you need a robot dog... I think they're only commercially available. What is d5? Dude. Is that safe? That looks like a Morales move. Only Morales would play d5 here. And the entire position is based on, on not opening the game for the two bishops. In a way. And, and you don't know what color to... To, to play on because white has both bishops either way he can get you but when Rubenstein does this he's praying that he can use the active rook and he won't be opening up this dark square bishop too much I mean I'm concerned about e5 are we just like getting crushed on e5 Morales' favorite square So let's say pawn takes e5, pawn takes e4, obviously. You could even play knight takes. This knight is pretty invasive. But I don't really know what's going on. I mean, f3, maybe white sacks a pawn or something. 
This... This is unclear. Obviously this move would be like number one candidate move. And then I guess black takes back with the pawn. Or the rook. Both recaptures are possible here. Knight takes. I guess all captures are, are possible. Even knight takes. Black suddenly getting a lot of activity with this knight takes c3. So check it out. Like Rubinstein is probably, he's sitting there. He plays d5. It's a risky move. He's expecting like ed or or de. And what does the guy do? He plays f4. You're like, whoa! Where did that come from? That's the kind of move that you're not prepared for. You're never prepared for f4. Rubinstein is a great positional player and decent tactically, but I'd almost guarantee he missed this. I certainly would have missed it. You just can't be prepared for every contingency. You have to come up with something like this to beat a player like Rubinstein. Ordinary moves are never going to beat him. He's going to see through everything you're doing. It has to be something surprising. So, okay, f4. What about pawn takes pawn? e5. We're just going to just roll. How does black play this? My god. But f4 is a very upsetting move, but it makes a lot of sense. We're playing for the e5 square. We're playing on the dark squares. We're playing f4, although we'd like to have a rook file, the rook's line be open. So let's say black plays knight takes here. What about knight takes? You, you would assume pawn takes e5 is forced. If knight takes c3, queen f3, or queen d3. Which one? Is white's attack strong enough? It looks pretty strong. But I'm still not 100% convinced. Rubinstein played this move. This is a key moment. So F4 very upsetting psychologically. I was right on a very brief analysis. This does look like the key line. Knight takes E4. Although it's unclear. F takes E4, Knight takes C3. This is what I would have been concerned about. Computers even looking at queen g4. I didn't think that was possible. That looks kind of over the top. So black's better. Like the whole thing may be slightly, slightly unsound for white. Damn. So he played this instead. Like, why is it this, this isn't as good? We may not get the c3 pawn here, and the white center will be, be stronger. If he gets the c3 pawn, he knocks out the base of the white pawn chain. Queen b6. Queen b6 too slow. After f4. Well, no, I mean, I guess it's a move. But just like the other line, it might allow us time to, it may give us time to keep our, our center protected. Takes here. It's interesting. I would still probably sacrifice this pawn on c3. Maybe just give it up. Bishop e3, knight takes c3 or something. Yeah, no, it does look like queen b6 is a move. 
It stops DE. You probably have to do this. Knight E4. <clears throat> Okay, let's just be materialistic. <clears throat> Are you gonna sacrifice? <coughs> here, knight d4, let's say queen f3. You don't have anything here. There's nothing fancy for black now. So you're gonna play c5 or something? You hope that you have, you have c5, I guess. It may be enough for some sort of counterplay. Truthfully, White's attack here is not exactly that fast. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a reasonable line. Is Queen B6 a move? Seriously? FE5, DE4, what? FE5, Knight E4. Yeah, it's playable. Computer likes knight f5. Interesting. Definitely seems playable. But this is the line that seems simplest. So knight e4, f4, knight c3 with an unclear position. In the game, Rubenstein played e takes f4, which is slightly worse. I have to admit, I, I don't know what I expected here. I expected white to like keep the base of the pawn chain on c3. But he decided to go for the pawn roller, threatening f5. So if you take on c3, it looks like a another Nimzo theme. I mean, this pawn roller is extremely dangerous. And this bishop opens up. White's attack is very likely could be winning without having to calculate too much here. Based on the pawns, that's his idea. And that's why this whole line was bad. Great judgment by White. And so Rubinstein does what a great defender will do. He tries to blockade the position. It's a lot like, you know, those of you that, that might know the, the famous game from Nottingham. I don't remember, I think it was Nottingham, Capablanca versus Bafanik, where Bafanik was White against Capablanca. They didn't play too many games, obviously. But there was this amazing game by Bafanik where he beat Capablanca. Capablanca tried to blockade a Nimzo with f5, and it didn't hold. Knight f5 obviously is a huge question. But I mean, it's hanging in the air there, undefended. Black must have discoveries. Possibly rook f8. But not clear, really. <clears throat> I mean, if you play something like rook f8, maybe the most obvious would be knight f4, let's say. Knight f4, bishop f4. Bishop here. He was unconvinced by knight f5, so he played this. And the Black King starts to be opened up. Is it enough? Knight f6, f5. Two bishops, pawn cramping on f5. It's a very, very Morales like game. Now I understand. We've got control of e5, the open e file now. I don't like this. So did anything else work there? I can't blame Black for playing f5 though. What are you going to do against this massive armada? Takes here? Can we play knight takes c3? This is also extremely slow. Queen d3 and back.
F5's best move, jeez. Knight takes c3 is close. Wow, amazing. According to the engine, this is best move. Takes. I'm starting to like white here. Wow. So this is where he went wrong. Black did. But you gotta be a computer to play like this. This move is apparently playable, though it looks ugly. The White King is also open on the G file. But the moves that look scariest are this. Black has a lot of activity. Queen F7. Look on no bad pieces. Even the bishop on C8 will, will come in the game. I mean, is that the story of this game, like, positionally? If the white square, I mean, if the dark square bishop is bad, then white is worse. If the dark square bishop becomes strong, then, then black is worse. Or how effective that, that dark square bishop really is plays a big role in the evaluation of the position. Like right here, this bishop is shut down. So this is a mistake. I agree. I don't like this position anymore. I don't like it. There's an open file. This is going to get strong. There's f5. And this is where it went downhill. Clearly white is better after f5. Although the question is, can white break through? I think the e5 square, as Morales knows very well, is going to be important. That's a huge outpost for white. What's going to happen, like bishop f4, bishop e5, or something? Supporting bishop f4. And ultimately using the e5 square as a way to get into the black position. Guaranteed. Queen f7, bishop d3. I mean, I would try to trade queens if I were black here. But there's no guarantees. Queen h5. Yeah, I mean, it just looks like the e5 square is everything in this position. It's a foothold for white's pieces. Never give up your strong point, Warnaki. Isn't that, isn't that the truth, right? He had to give it up, though, no matter what he did. He was forced, and that's why f4 is such a dramatic turning point in the game. Pawn sacrifice or whatever, he's forcing black to give up his strong point, and that's where the game really turns. White gets control of e5. And now he can use e5 for, for pieces. If this move, interestingly, that looks horrible, structurally. Truthfully, it looks terrible. But it doesn't give up the e5 square. You know? That seems really important. After this, it's rather clear. There it is. What about queen h5 trying to trade queens here? If queen g3, you have queen g4. What does white do? Queen f2? Possibly you could, you could avoid trading queens, but it's kind of awkward. Queen f2. If you traded queens, or allowed the exchange of queens, maybe black can hang on. It's still a bad endgame though, even here. 
But I would think that black has some chances for survival. Not fun. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if he had played knight d4, knight c3, knight d4, knight c3, it would have been playable for black. Now it's really bad. Black's playing like a French here, getting control of the e4 square. Still, it's a tough position for white to win. Very tough. White was by no means guaranteed to win this game. <laughs> Bishop f3. Now what's our plan? It's still, look, I mean, how does white break through against this blockade? It's hard to do. There's a sensitive point there. The dark squares. Black not having a dark squared bishop. So despite, like, Spielman being, like, the sacrificial player, it's, like, really a very strategically based game. The g7 and the, the dark squares. It's about to fall apart. Here I expected queen there, but he drops in exchange to bishop e7. I mean d6. But either way, you're in trouble. King f8. This is a bad sign. When all your pieces are conglomerating inside of a little box, that's a bad sign. That means that means that you you're not coordinating optimally. Get in the box. It's amazing to see a really great player end up in a situation like this. The knight g6 check. Ouch. Takes queen g8. Knight g8. Bishop d6. Freezer pops. Comes to mind for some reason. <laughs> um, well, we have some options like rook takes f5, rook takes g6. I guess rook takes e5, sorry, rook f5, rook g6. With the idea of rook g7. <laughs> sort of a problem. So he plays this. Wait to move. It's pretty cute, actually. Rook f6. See lies. So this rook is pinned to defending g7. You have to play rook takes f6. And then rook takes g7. So now king e8 is the only move. But it's not very good. King e8 is literally the only move that's not made in one, right? He resigns here. King e8. Now do we play... Rook takes e7 check? Or is there a mate? There's no mate, unfortunately. Acerbate, sorry. Rook takes, queen takes, bishop takes. 
And it doesn't look good. Yeah, what will be the theory for today? Any suggestions? I'm taking suggestions, guys. Retro games are finished. We did our we did our part today. Guys, please support the stream by donating and subscribing if you can. Appreciate it. Taking suggestions. I'm going to open up a new study for today. Tools. Learn. All right. New study. Play F4. Wednesday opening ideas. Wait, we already have one. It's good to have the studies back. My studies. If you ever search in studies, you have to type out the entire name. All right, guys. What are we going to study today? Last week it was Karo Khan Advanced Variation. We've got about We've got about 50 minutes. We're analyzing an op opening theory. We're analyzing opening theory. Let's get a new chapter. Create a new chapter. I think Astrobay went to sleep. There he is. We're analyzing the Bodler attack against the Sicilian today. Today's opening idea is refuting the Stafford Gambit. Knight f3, knight f6. Knight takes e5, knight c6, d4. The anti Eric Rosen. No, seriously. Aspie's been working on that. Guys, welcome to the stream. Someone submit an idea for opening analysis. Let's vote. In all seriousness, why don't we go for e4, c6, knight f3, d5? Why am I so freaking thirsty? Some open Sicilian. Alright. Open Sicilian is fun. How about something like this? Yeah, we need a new chapter. All right. I'm going to create a new chapter. Am I in the study? Yeah, it's just a, my size chapter. Chapter two. There is a chapter two. There's already chapter two. All right, we need a new chapter. Edit study. Why is it so hard to add a new chapter here? Go to chapters. I had a new chapter is right there. Chapter three. All right. Rochi won the Sicilian opening. Yeah, I was looking at that the other day. That's an old line in the Nidorf. I don't think it's great for white. Six Rook G1. Nigel Short played that. That's interesting. Come on, guys. Let's get a consensus. Waraki suggested knight f3 against the Karo Khan. Shiverspieler with Sicilian, open Sicilian. Someone suggested Spanish. Third option resigns. Spanish opening. I wanted to look at this. Can we objectively analyze the dragon? Alright, I'll tell you guys something I had the other day. 
One of my students played a training game against a strong player and beat him. Playing the white side of the dragon. So, you can look at this from either side. Um, I'm interested in the truth only. In the in the castle's queenside dragon. All right. Let's look at it this way. I want to know the truth. I'd be playing for white here, because I don't really play the dragon. What is black's best move here? D5. Is is there any other line that's reliable for black besides D5? Are all the other lines just garbage? Bishop E6 is a move. Miles played that, probably. He played Bishop E6 everywhere in the in the Carol Khan and like move five. Bishop E6 is interesting, Morales. But why is there the highest rated game is Victor Gajic? That's not a good sign. It's not a good sign when the highest rated player, well, the highest average rating game. Let's see, Chris Ward against, I mean, Desperation doesn't have much following. No. Okay, so, Knight D4 is a line. I don't think it's wrapped is too strong. Azerbay, thanks for the donation, man. We need your support. Not many viewers today, but people don't want to really like study chess. They just want to look at puzzles. It's ridiculous. I mean, I'm trying to, to really seriously analyze. So D5 is the best move, but after D5, right? What, what about all the different lines? Queen E1 is interesting. I used to play that a little bit. Um, but I'll show you the main line, right? E takes d5, knight takes d5 now. One of my students played this line, knight takes c6, b takes c, and bishop d4. And this player who was black, who's like a higher rated player, facing a low rated player, this is supposedly like the main line of the d5 dragon. Like you're, you're screwed here. I mean, what are you going to do? E5 is like anti-positional, and that's the main line. I mean, this position is dangerous if white is not well prepared. But I think if white is like well prepared, it it's a real problem. You know, like maybe maybe black's position just objectively sucks. Is what I'm thinking. This is a serious problem for the dragon, in a way. Like, you can allow this, which sucks, and white is just better. And if he's a really competent player, he can probably torture you. No, Schieberspieler, I don't really want to dismiss that bishop e6 move in the dragon. It's pretty, pretty playable, I guess. I mean, this can be sacrificed to exchange, but my problem with this position is black, black structural issues. Long-term structural issues with the broken pawns, the e4 square. I looked at this like main line here, bishop e6, knight e4. I just don't think that black can equalize. You know, I, I just think it's a problem. Yeah, I just don't think that black can equalize here. There's no way. He's just structurally worse. We were looking at this, I guess, rook e8, h4, and then black played h6, which is main line. So what do you guys think about this position? There's an Elvest game here that we thought was, was pretty important. He had another game, not, not the game with Nakamura, but another one. So like white can't break through with an attack on the king side, but structurally black's position just sucks. You can play instead of rook e8 something. You can play rook b8, but I don't think it really does anything. I don't think it changes the nature of the position. I'm just, yeah, you, yeah, maybe you can take the exchange later on. But you don't have to take it right away. If he leaves it there, we'll probably take it. Rook b8 may not be that great. There's nothing here. Um... 
I think the main line is still the best moves. Knight e4, rook e8, h4, h6, and now I don't know. g4 is the main line for white with the idea of g5. But I just don't think this is very good for black. Look at this game here, Nispiano versus Azarov. Like, I wouldn't want to play this for black. And that's supposed to be black's, like, main line in this variation. But the problem is... I think the problem is this, you know, here. Look at what the computer says. The truth is that, that e5 is a bad move. But the problem is, like, people that play the dragon, they're like, oh, we play the dragon, we want to be aggressive, we want to play for a win or whatever, you know, and this has, like, yeah, this is the only move to play for a win, essentially, with e5. You, like, tempt black into making, like, an anti-positional move that weakens his position and blocks his bishop on g7. And after that, white is clearly better. But I think from white's perspective, the problem is this line. What happens if knight takes c3? See, like, Spidler. What if, what if Black really ob is objective, like Peter Spidler, and he's willing to be, like, you know, just a tiny bit worse, but it's not so bad. Or the other variation, Bishop takes d4. Maybe this is the best of all. See, Magnus starts showing up. <laughs> When you play the best move, Magnus is interested. Bishop takes d4. So that's it, man. That's the problem with this variation for both sides. Suddenly the winning chances go down dramatically for both sides. To boring land we go. I'm a tough guy. I play the dragon. Karawana Nakamura. But this is like the most boring line of ever. Queen takes, queen b6. Black is playing for a draw, and he should be. So now white has like it's just a tiny, tiny technical advantage. Let's check this out. Queen e5 is the engine's move. I mean, if you exchange here and take the pawn. Your A pawn is hanging, you can't. And this is nothing. This is just a draw. It's funny, Boo managed to win this position with black against the 2200. Damn, dude. Knight takes d5, C takes d5, A3. The guy messed it up, no, he got it right. This is basically like, draw-ish. Schieberspieler will beat you here with black. And I will too. Somehow, maybe we can we can try, but objectively it's a draw. But if I was playing Dragon Man, I would definitely not go into that E5 line. There's no way I'm playing that. That's like rolling the dice that your opponent is not well prepared. This is just a bad move strategically. So bishop d4, queen d4, queen b6, and now what do you do? You can't trade queens and fix this pawn structure. So what's the best move? Knight a4. Karawana Nakamura. Ivanchuk Carlson. Every game is a draw at the top level. Black also doesn't want to trade queens and leave white in a better endgame. With a simple structural advantage. But you put your knight on the side of the board. Why not knight takes d5 instead of queen takes b6? Oh. That's an interesting question. It's a line. I guess black's sacking a pawn here. Gawain Jones. Didn't he play this line against Magnus? Get a, get a winning position and lose? This looks like the other line. This sucks too. 
Unless you can take this pawn somehow, but I mean, you look. This looks dangerous. Suddenly, this this is just dangerous for White. With open lines. Man, this guy got a draw against Jones. It must have been a calculated idea to trade queens and play for a draw. As far as I'm concerned, Baramidza, whoever is, is playing for a draw here. This this is not a move a Grandmaster would ever play for a win. This looks interesting though, Queen E5. But I mean, still, like, if white has an advantage, it's it's just my my new. This seems okay for black. So that's got to be my point. Is this has got to be black's best line, right? So what's white's best way? From this position to play for a win. If you could trade queens on your terms, but you can't. Bishop c4. Ah. But I like that. Ivanchuk Carlson 1 0, 2009. There's a more recent game. So, what does the Oracle say? We have to guide the oracle, the secret of modern opening analysis. Knight e3, rook d2. What happens if queen d4 and knight takes g2? Obvious question. Damn, nobody tried this. That's unbelievable. Nobody ever dared to play this because of rook e4, trapping the knight. Damn, dude, there's some room for new ideas here. It looks like a bunch of people have lost. Kudrin lost in 93. Now, he's like a dragon expert. Upset by Satoshi. I remember that. That year. Satoshi came to, like, the World Open for the... Some junior team. He was wearing like a track suit. It was embarrassing. Rook d2. The classic like Soviet track suit look. Doesn't work for Satoshi. Um, maybe bishop c4 is not so good, but how? Here. Knight e3, rook d2. So this move, check this out. Novelty, rook takes e5. Rook e4, knight takes g2. Only Schieberspieler could love this position. <laughs> Talk about technical. Wow, we're still clearly better. Knight f4 is no good. Man. To the average Joe, white has only a tiny edge. But these pawns are weak. Weaker than white's pawns. That's pretty deep. So bishop c4, you play this, taking the bishop. And now black's okay. This actually looks like it could be kind of dangerous for white. The b2 square. He's gonna go into Karpov mode. Maybe you can play like b3, king b2, just sort of hang out. But I mean, you know, any ideas of playing aggressively with white and attacking black and the dragon are out the window here. Take care, Antonio.
Thanks for joining us. Dragon Theory. What about this other variation? Bishop takes... I mean, knight takes c3. There's a bunch of games here, but look at, like, the winning chances. Nobody plays this. Caruana Miranda. Caruana lost? What? Whoa. Caruana lost with white in this line? Say what? That's embarrassing. What was that? Like a rapid game? Was that something on chess.com? The chess.com chess league. Seriously, where would Caruana lose to this guy? Was there something... Something in the States? In St. Louis? Some weird event? Wait a minute. I want to see how Fabiano loses with white in this line. Where, where it's like unlosable. Queen c3, bishop h6 check. What? He didn't play queen takes c3? No, he played queen takes c3. Where's the game? Caruana Miranda. Bishop h6 check, bishop e3. Bishop e3, queen e3. Caruana's like the only player in history ever to lose this position with white. You just have a better structure and 200 rating points. Man, that's pretty rough. I mean, black's playing for a draw. If you fix the structure though, you have nothing. That's equivalent to offering a draw. You can play queen b6, be a chicken, or you can try to win. I'm curious what, what Fabiano did, he took, all right. Takes the e7 pawn here. There's a lot of theory here. Gashimov. Queen a3. It's interesting that the computer wants to play a5. Oh, this is old Tolnai stuff. Wow. Game notation is on the screen? What? You mean the... the names? Is on the board? I should get rid of that anyway. Dude, that's Tolnai analysis from 94. A5. It might be a good line. pretty natural move remember to donate donate to your local chess streamer oh you're talking about the actual notation all right anyway our text was on the board Yeah, this is this is kind of risky for white. So Caruana went for it with queen e7, bishop e6, queen a3, rook d8, bishop d3. Still, how do you lose? He's like the only player ever to lose here. He has another game against Alexeyev. That's interesting. In 2009. Wernaki. So basically, Miranda was able to follow the Alexei of game for 2009, thinking Caruana would play the same line, and he did. But maybe Miranda played something else here. Did he do this? No. He must have played rook d5.
Okay, so this is interesting. This is the normal move, rook d e1. But Fabiano played this and lost. Apparently that's like a terrible blunder. Leaving yourself in this in this pin. Wow. A5, black has active counterplay. But that's funny, he he played differently in his other game. Is it possible he just forgot? Played the wrong rook move? I don't see the Caruana game here, it should be up there. Yeah, it's the pro league group stage. Isn't online chess wonderful? It makes 2800s play like bunnies. Fabiano just like forgot his analysis and played the wrong rook move. But that's not a real game. It's just some stupid online chess league. It was, yeah, some fast time control. But this, this line is a little dangerous for white. I agree. Knight c3. Queen c3, bishop h6 check, bishop e3. This is all forced. Check, takes, queen b6. Play the dragon for a draw. Queen e7. I mean, any five year old child could learn this and beat Fabiana Caruana in the, the great pro chess league. But there's no way that Miranda knew that. It was just some online game. Maybe they have time to prepare. I don't know. But this definitely looks like a reasonable way for Black to play. So he has two options. But again, like limit, limited winning chances for both sides after knight takes c3 or bishop takes d4. But it looks like Fabiano always plays this line. Cyrix, welcome. So anyway, um, this is the sharper way for black to play, but I think it's like positionally suspect. Now, are we gonna see any of those top players play this anymore? I mean, we didn't see any top players to begin with, except for Magnus. Magnus is, this was like the only one, right? Willing to play this line. Bishop takes, queen takes, queen b6. Maybe there's room for, for new moves here, like bishop e6. This hasn't been played much. Affect played a game in 2014. But I mean, white starts attacking now on the king's side. If you don't offer trade of queens, that's pretty natural. I don't think that's great. Trading queens is the right idea here. Svidler. I mean, but Svidler doesn't really play the dragon. I don't know. Gelfand started playing the dragon at some point. No, he plays the accelerated dragon. I guess Svidler plays a lot of stuff, but mostly he plays solid Sicilians. I mean, Peter always played the e6 Sicilians, even if he plays like online. That's what he's going to go to. It's kind of like maybe a one game preparation or he plays it once in a while. I mean, who plays the dragon? Gawain Jones? It's dangerous. Hikaru. No, Hikaru would be the number one suspect. Queen b6. But um, the theory here is much more interesting after e5. Here, bishop e6. Ninety four, and I mean there is a movement toward playing rook b8 now but I guess this has been known Sachs played it in 87 in chess tempo the top 20 rated games by black didn't feature e5 yeah 
It's it's just too difficult. It looks like only Gawain Jones would do that. Okay, this game with, with Hikaru and Elvest in 2007. I mean, Hikaru wasn't... He wasn't top 10 at that time. He didn't rise yet. That's when he was just rising up. That, w that was possibly from something like Foxwoods. I might have even played in 2007. But nobody will play it anymore. Yeah, it's too risky. Anyway, it's a solid way to play with white. I feel like this this is one of white's best lines. Another interesting line, though, is, um, is queen e1. This is more complicated, I think. Keeping the tension. I wonder what's going on in the theory here. I actually studied this at one point long ago. E5 or E6. So here we see a non Nakamura from 2018, Duda Nakamura from 2018. These guys are being a little more ambitious by playing Queen E1, it seems like. Leiko, Nakam Leiko Carlson, draw. Surprise. So Duda Nakamura 2018, let's see, he lost with white. <clears throat> hmm, I wanted to insert this. Is it here? What is that? Where's the game? There it is, no. Did it insert? Someone help me. There it is. Alright, so it's the main game now. Alright. E5, knight takes c6. So what was this from Gibraltar? At least it's a real tournament. This is from Gibraltar. When, when, when Hikaru won, was this the year Hikaru won in Gibraltar? This is similar. At the end of the day, though, it feels like we lost time bringing our queen back to e1. That's the only defining feature of this line that I can feel right here. I feel like we lost the tempo by playing queen e1. Seriously. If you compare this to their line, it's, it's very apparent, like, right away. What did we really gain here? Like, we can never take this pawn without allowing all, all kinds of dangerous counterplay. So we don't really benefit much from the open line, and we moved our queen back from d2 to a less active square on e1. What are we going to do, like, queen h4? Yeah, this just doesn't do it. I mean, maybe it's still playable, but it just doesn't seem like an improvement for white. I didn't know this was a lie. King b1. Nigel. And, and Miss Piano. King b1 doesn't feel... Doesn't feel right either. So I think you... You gotta take on d5. Looks forced. So it's all forced. E d5, knight d5, knight c6, b c6, bishop d4. This is a solid conclusion. But white has to find a way, from white's perspective, to play for a win here after queen b6. Yeah, it looks like both lines are playable. We have to find a way to play for a win here. We also have to find a way for white to play for a win here. But I guess the Miranda game can be improved. Check here, takes, queen takes, queen b6. Do we have to take the risk of taking this pawn on e7? Some people have played queen c3. Garamian versus Edward. 
What about this? We don't take the pawn, we just go back. And just keep the structure. No sense in being materialistic. Why do you say it looks ugly? I think it's pretty. It has a pretty diagonal. It guards e3. It guards b2. Black has a weak pawn on c6 that we're going to win 30 moves from now and grind him down in a rook end game. This is a queen d2 dragon. Like, objectively, I don't like queen e7. It feels kind of risky. Maybe we can be just technically better here without any risk. Bishop e6. She was sort of suggested bishop c4. Is there anything wrong with this? I guess there's a hole here. White has no wins here. So the experts don't do that, they play h4. The experts. There's like no top games whatsoever here. The experts don't play this. But we can't ignore the statistics. I mean, white, white does have a plus score with h4 specifically. Rook d8. What would Wojtek Miranda do? Shankland, 2008 when he was 2400. It's still amazing to me that Shanklin improves so quickly. That is, it was even weird. I played him around 2008 when he came to Budapest. I don't understand how Shanklin went from like 2400 to 2600 overnight virtually. That was pretty unbelievable. Though I've seen a lot of players do that. Caruana was another one who just like Caruana, Hikaru, Shanklin, they all, they all like went through like 2400 to 2600 like in one day, it seemed like, which is where most players get stuck. It's interesting. Bishop d3. You know, maybe Shanklin has something here. This is an old game, but... Even back then, he was analyzing pretty well on his own. I told you guys the story about how I played Shanklin in Budapest, and I was pissed because we, we played this round robin in, in first Saturday in like 2008 and in Hungary, in Budapest. And, and basically the deal is the organizer doesn't make the pairings before the round robin starts which a lot of them do, but in this case they draw the lots like, and you decide who plays who, like right before the game starts. And I never had this issue with another opponent, but he brought his laptop, which I think is really kind of messed up too. He brought his laptop to the, to the tournament hall, which is kind of weird. Like, I don't think you should really do that, but I guess sometimes people have to, they don't have a place to put it, but he was like, I find out like 10 minutes before the game that we're playing each other and he's like preparing for me in the tournament hall like right before the game. I'm like, it's like it's like a some sort of fencing match where one guy has like a weapon and the other one doesn't. I felt it was kind of like unsportsmanlike. The different people didn't agree with me. Some people were like, no, it's not unsportsmanlike. That's the rule so he can do it or something. I just thought it was like pretty unfair. From 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 a honor standpoint, you know it's it's not really right. So we ended up winning the game probably largely because of that. The second game when I had time to prepare, I, I drew, but I was pretty pissed about it. He also seemed really really arrogant, and at that time he was rated like twenty four hundred, which was not a big deal. We were the same rating level. 
I used to be able to listen to Walkman at the board. That was great. Even relatively recently. Even in the days of the MP3 player. Asturbate. It was still not forbidden to listen to to listen to music at the board. Those were the days. Yeah, it's just funny how he was arrogant even before he was a strong player. Most people become arrogant after they become strong players. So I guess it's more fair that way. But anyway, I still respect his analysis. I mean, this 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 might actually still hold water even now. It looks like White has some attacking chances, no weaknesses. Well, G2, a little bit. It's just interesting. Bishop D3 is the best move according to the computer. It's not a coincidence. And he definitely prepared this. Well, I mean, I don't know. Rook d5, h5. It definitely got in my head and made me probably not play my best. But I don't think he was doing it for that reason. He just did it because he could. The idea of honor doesn't occur to a lot of people. So black plays rook c5 here, it's a tricky move. Damn, and the guy's like already in trouble. Queen e1 threatening this. I mean, well, you're never really going to be able to play queen h4 though because of rook h5. So how does this work? This was their game, rook b8, b3. Dude sacked a piece here, whoa. Bishop takes b3, a takes b3, queen b3. My god. Wow. So this apparently just doesn't work. Anastasios got excited. It was all under control. <laughs> queen b3, rook h4. There's another game where the same exact thing happened. That's unbelievable. The thing is, like, a lot of people arrive to the tournament in the first round and they bring their stuff with them or something. Every other round in the tournament, you know who you're going to play and you have time to prepare for them. It's only the first round game there would be a chance that you wouldn't have time to prepare. And that's how he got me. Okay, this is over. Black just made a mistake. So A5, Warnocky? Then you're getting mated. I know you didn't suggest it here. I just suggested on your behalf. No, I like this. This, this is bad. For example, this variation. Seems like a practical try for black. I'm just saying, is there a way we can play for a win here without grabbing this pawn, which is heavily analyzed. Speaking of people who play the dragon, Gashimov, Topalov, although Topalov didn't play it much, maybe occasionally. You still, why don't you like queen c3? What's your reason you don't like queen c3? Would you like to suggest the reason why you don't like it? Here's another move, rook e1. Queen e1 is not so good. Rook e1 sort of, seems sort of stupid. Black just plays bishop e6. You can't trade queens, taking the pawn is dangerous. Queen is static there. Well, would you suggest a different square? Like a3, h6, e5? <clears throat> the queen is, is useful. How about rook d4? Novelty.
This is a pretty cool idea to play rook e4. The premise of this whole position is that I want to trade queens, but I don't want to trade queens by fixing his pawns on b6. If I could trade queens and leave him with that crappy pawn structure, why just slightly better? But it's hard to get him to, to trade queens. So check this out. Bishop e6, rook e4. The d file now can be covered by bishop d3. Maybe. Rook f d8. What about this pawn push, though? Now I gotta go in like five minutes, so we're not gonna have time to go over something. Maybe next week the Richter Rouser is a good suggestion. Because I actually know a lot about the Richter Rouser. I'd like to look at some new lines in the Richter Rouser. Maybe next Wednesday we can do that. Bishop f5. Here we go again. Taking this dangerous pawn. Crucify Tree Queens is a different story. I think we discovered something interesting. Mornaki didn't want to move the queen, so I found a move that, that, that compromises with him. How about c5? Oh, there's another plan here. This is kind of messed up. Rook h4. I'm not sure where we should put the rook. Shiva Spiller, you're not streaming today, right? Just on Fridays? C5 would avoid the exchange of queens, like, permanently. So I would be a little uncomfortable about this. Rook e4 again. Don't play b4, okay? This gets very weird. Now a rook could be trapped. h4. Queen d6. Rook b7. Bishop d5. Rook e7. Bishop b6. Draw. It's obviously a draw. For example, in that line. Bishop e6 first. What did we say? h4. You said rook e4. Yeah, this looks pretty good actually. So that's that variation. But it seems like the main one is actually this. As Schieberspieler mentioned, like all the top players, including Magnus didn't play that variation, they played this. Here's the same principle. We we wouldn't mind trading queens, but we we don't want to fix this pawn structure in any way. The computer's number one move is this, with this, the centralized queen. And I guess f6 doesn't work, right? Surprisingly, that's playable. You would assume that just loses immediately. It's not so simple. Knight, e, knight, knight takes, pawn takes. This looks horrible, but it's not so clear. Rook d8. 
Interesting, like you put this position in, you put this rare move in there with queen e5, and Sockfish's number one suggestion, rook d8, wasn't played in a single game. Licking batteries is not recommended, man. Or frozen poles. The inside of ice boxes. Perhaps more, more exciting than batteries. So rook d8, the engine's number one suggestion, isn't even played in a single game here. I was talking about like flag poles. Dude, you're nothing but trouble. Especially now in the time of COVID. We don't want to do that. It was already bad. Non-consensual contact, but um, now it's even more dangerous. So queen e5, interesting move. So the number one move is knight a4. Black avoids the exchange of queens. He plays b3. Before we go, I guess we can... Michael, Michael Adams versus Gawain. It's weird. I mean, black plays... This is kind of weird. Knight a4. Excuse me. Knight a4. Queen a5. And now after b3, black plays queen c7. So he induces the weakening of b3. And if you think about it, the white king isn't safe. So then he goes back to c7. But I guess white is still slightly better. We don't see any like Magnus games or anything here. Rajabov a couple times. But this is the other move, Queen C7. And here we see Nakamura crossing. Now hello. That's notable. It's notable that both Nakamura and Carlson prefer Queen C7 to playing Queen A5. F5 is never going to be played. Well, it blocks your bishop. It um it weakens your king side. Yeah, e five is one thing, but f five is very weakening. F five involves, you know, kind of weakening the dark squares. But I find this very interesting. Nakamura, Carlson, Rajabov. But then when you look at just Queen C seven, you got Nakamura, 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 and Carlson. It's a stronger group here, playing queen c7, than queen a5. What's the argument? I mean, basically it would be like queen a5 induces b3, but the argument would be b3 is a constructive move. If b3 is a constructive move, then queen a5 was a waste of time. If b3 is a weakening move, then queen a5 was a good move. But why are all the strong players playing queen c7 rather than queen a5? They're their viewpoint is that b3 is a constructive move. That's what I'm I'm gleaning from this. That queen c7, that's their opinion. I don't know. A couple people played b3 here anyway. That's apparently a mistake. Anyway, guys, I gotta go. Thanks for watching and tuning in. We're gonna be back with our subscriber stream. Game analysis with, with subscribers and friends. Tomorrow night at 6.30 CET. Please support the stream if you can. If you enjoyed the games today. I enjoy analyzing chess seriously. Um, it's a little different approach than most people here on Twitch. I don't treat chess as a video game. And um, I try to take a serious approach to it. So it is what it is. We'll see everybody on Thursday night. For more analysis with subscribers. F4 is the lesson of the day. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.